Hello, this is Victor. I'm here with a new video, and this time I want to talk a video. Uh, well, as this video, I want to talk about a topic that has been started by Vince Venturella and is the army centerpiece. Uh, he was talking about and um, to what is the favorite army centerpiece, what is the miniature that we like as a centerpiece, and what type of miniatures we would like to see in future. But first, I want to talk what is for me a, an army centerpiece, and I will say there are two types of army centerpiece. There are this spectacular monster vehicle, depending if you play 40k or you play fantasy, uh, that is uh, dragging the the yeah the the tension of of the people when they look at the army is the first thing that they they see, and this can be uh, several type of miniatures and will depend a lot on the size of the army and the type of army. Uh, I will show you now some examples of what is for me a centerpiece, and yeah and later on we uh, yeah I will tell you why. But there's in that other type of centerpieces army centerpieces these are. This is character that you invest a lot of time or in painting or you invest time in in the fluff and it's the centerpiece of your army in the sense that it's the center of the army. It's all the army is gravitating around him and you create the army around uh, this uh, uh, around this character. And sometimes this time normally this character can be one of the HQs or can be one of your uh, yeah, it's just one of a small character, or it sometimes can be even a unit. So you build your army around a unit. So let me show you some of my favorite centerpieces on some of the centerpieces of my armies uh, all over the time and from different armies, and what is the reason why they are a centerpiece. So let's start with one of the easiest. So here we have his the the dragon from the. Dogs of War, and this was a centerpiece because it was my first monster I ever painted, and I, I was willing to paint a monster, so I think, okay, sorry that the light is so bad here, let me see if I can put better I don't light. think I have better light, but yeah. So this was one of the centerpieces painted long, long time ago, I, uh, I, did, I invest some time in the banners, pretty happy with how the wings look like. But yeah, very basic stuff, very basic uh, painted at the end if I compare with some paint jobs that I do. But I start doing some blending and I start doing some techniques that I'm using no more uh, you, you commonly. But this was one of my first, I would say, centerpieces, army centerpieces. But now I will show you something that is even older than this. And is the very old Screaming Bell. When I start playing Warhammer Fantasy, this was an army centerpiece. This has been my Skaven's uh, centerpiece for a long, long time. And now if you compare him just to the Help It Abomination, it looks like a joke. And I like to keep him, you see, that is painted long time ago. The paint job is far from being good. It's just uh, some very basic techniques, the colors are not matching very well. Uh, yeah, it was very um, with uh, also color schemes from the 80s. So, but this was a real centerpiece in the army when they launched that. Was a great miniature, but and and was fun to paint at the moment. So this has been one of the centerpieces for a long time in in my army. This but guy, no, this little space marine, chaos space marine, has been the centerpiece of my uh, Alpha Legion for a long, long time. My army was gravitating around him, so he was really the what was driving the history of my army. He, I, I really was imagining him as the old, um, well, the past hero that have uh, fall into the, uh, into chaos. So really, this was for me one of the centerpieces of the army, and is when you invest time uh, and. Yeah, in try to do a better paint job on him. So this was also quite an old miniature. It's the is an all metal uh, chaos lord. But I think this was this type of centerpiece. I say, okay, is not a super spectacular miniature. Uh, it's just the paint job that I dedicate time. But for me, he was uh, yeah the centerpiece of my army. But then in chaos, they we start having some bigger tanks. 
and this was there was a moment in Warhammer 40k when this was huge there was nothing bigger than that in terms of tanks there was a moment when I was doing Warhammer 40k that this, this was the biggest tank that you can have and yeah, I was I think even before Forge World, Forge World was not doing so many things at the moment so this was a centerpiece and land riders can be centerpieces of armies for a long time and I really was one of the big tanks that I really paint and very happy with that and yeah, and as you can see I try to, uh, you cannot see because the light is not good enough but I, I try to paint the, in the inside of the tank I don't think you, you will be able to see anything there but the in inside is painted so really this was another type of centerpieces that we, we had on, on the army let me show no another one this was very recent but when you play Bretonia you don't have big monsters this is really for me is what to be what have to be the hero the the general of your army and i think the general of the bretonia should be uh, uh, all the army should be around the fluff of your general in, in bretonia i love this miniature i really enjoy painting and know that the rules in age of sigmar uh, are more are better for him i think he will be will have more uh, he will see more the table, but really a uh, miniature that I really enjoyed to paint in the past, and I think he is going to be for a while the centerpiece of my Bretonia. There are no bigger miniatures. I would love to have, and here is one of my wishes. I would love to have uh, a miniature like the Emperor Karl Franks or the Griffon uh, for Bretonia, but as far. I think this was a great miniature, and this have this was the size of the monsters for a while. So he was, yeah. Now the monsters are very big. They look dwarf. When you see one of the all metal monsters to the, what they do today in plastic, they look dwarf. But these uh, have been these miniatures have been centerpieces of armies for a long time, and I think they deserve some attention. Here I'm going to show you three other miniatures that are centerpieces of my armies or I consider them the soul of my armies and it's because this guy uh, are for different reasons this guy because it's just a conversion that I did with bits from different parts is unique to me and I think I capture well what should be a uh, Imperial Guard uh, in general uh, in that guy and I was so happy with the result that I decide that I have to make the army gravitating around him. Even when I have with the Colonel Strachan, that is uh, uh, one of the most important characters, I put him on top of him in the chain of command. This is another guy. This, maybe today you don't look spectacular, but yeah, all are done from bits from different kits, and he is now my chapter master. And yeah, they don't need to be super uh, big miniatures to be the centerpiece of your army. You just, they need some love from you, and when you create your army, you make your army gravitating around him. And he has his uh, honor guard that goes with him, that completes for me the centerpiece is him with the honor guard, and then the rest is the army. And this guy from Forge Wall, I always love this guy. When I saw that, I say I want him. Uh, he really um, makes me think about the Imperial and the Renegades. Uh, make me it was one of those that made me do renegades. So there are miniatures that become the centerpiece because they are the miniatures that are pushing you to do an army, or really you want this miniature because it looks you find that it, for me he represents what is uh, one of the commanders of the renegades. Have not impressive weapons, but I think uh, the miniature is great and. Really, I when I saw this miniature, say I want him to be the general, and I want the army to go a bit around him. These are small ones. Other things that uh, I like and why. This thing, compare this to the. This is the and the light is not very good. Sorry, but he, this is my Valkyria. 
this miniature is really big, it's even bigger than than the Land Rider if you look at in, in in footprint. And of course when you do an army, this can be a common vehicle in any army, but when you do an army that is based on Imperial Guard infantry, when you put this guy on the table, this, he becomes suddenly the centerpiece of your army. So what I mean here is the centerpiece don't need to be the biggest um, uh, miniature of the range. All depends how it's compared to the rest of the army. And this is a, just a centerpiece because it's the biggest um, vehicle that you will see when I deploy my Imperial Guard. That is basically Sentinels and Infantry and this vehicle as the, as the centerpiece of the army. I'm planning to put more, but so far, as he's, he's the unique, he's the centerpiece. And here, one of the 90s, another thing from the 90s. This has been, for some long time, the most... I think it's the most difficult vehicle I ever paint. There are so much things going there, so much infantry. He was so weird in rules when they launched it at the beginning. Today I don't have any use for him, it's a pity, so I'm just using him as another tank, but I, I, will, I will really love to have seen him again on the battlefield. I think this was really nice command, it was a centerpiece for a long time on the Dark um, Elder, as was unique as a vehicle with uh, special rules, was the only, maybe the only tank that could have the ability to, sh to attack in close combat at the moment. And yeah, and I think he was centerpiece of, uh, of my Dark Elder army for a long time. So these are some of the centerpieces, but now we go to something really huge and big. I love also big things. And here we have one of my favorites, the Shadow Blade. Uh, Shadow Sword, sorry, the Shadow Sword uh, heavy tank. Really, I love these super heavy tanks. Uh, so far that I am have two at this moment, I'm planning to have the third one to make as a squadron. But they are really great um, se um, centerpieces for an army of Imperial Guard. If you have tanks, you need him and he will um, dwarf the lemon rules and anything that you have in the army. And now we go to one of the centerpieces that I'm more proud about and is this. Here's the Thunderhawk uh, yeah the Thunderhawk um, ship from my Space Marines and of course if you have that on the battlefield Nothing, um, very little things are bigger than that. So these are some centerpieces. So one, what I want to do next, what is my plans? And yeah, I have ideas for all my different armies. One thing that I really want to do is I want to paint one of these Imperial Knights, one of these small titans and that we have on the Warhammer 40k. But for my demons, I really love the big demons. I really love uh, the Blood Sister. So maybe in future I will be able to do that. As you can see, I collecting step by step. From we start from the early nineties to uh, to today, and there are always uh, the centerpiece can be from very little things sometimes to big uh, miniatures. So yeah, this is what I want to share. Uh, this is some of my um, centerpiece, and at the same time some of my favorite. Um, and miniatures. I hope you have enjoyed this video and please put below what are your favorite centerpiece in your army. Put pictures or put a video and show what is your uh, favorite centerpiece of your army. Here are some examples and the reason why they are uh, for me centerpieces of my army. And that's all for now. So thanks a lot for watching and see you in winter. Bye.